Cloth seam brushes are pretty nice if you know how and when to use it. Some people just pick up cloth brush, click a few times and call it useless and get back to sculpting. We're gonna prove them wrong. I use this low poly jacket as the test subject. Why they sleep so long? I like long things. There's nothing wrong with that. Before we get to the actual cloth simulation brushes, you need to know a thing or two about face sets, cause it plays a huge part in our work. If you know how to work with face set brushes, skip to the next part. Face sets are important, cause you can separate different parts of the mesh without actually dismantling them from each other. It has a lot of benefits, but we only gonna use them for cloth in this video. We got draw face set and box face set. If you select box face set, you can just hold click to select these areas, and the faces in that area turns to a different color each time. Draw face set does the same thing, but you have more control over it since you can draw each face by hand. Each time you click, you make a new face set. But if you want to continue spreading the face sets, you just need to hover your mouse on that color, hold control and start drawing. For example, if I hold control and start drawing from the purple one, the next face turns purple. If I start from the green one, it turns green. And obviously, starting from the empty faces clears out those face sets. Okay, now for the actual brushes. First one is pose. It was originally for for posing different parts of the characters and such, but it has cloth simulation too. Without changing the settings, if you hold click on the sleeves, it rotates the mesh based on the brush size. But if you change it to face sets, it rotates around the edges of this face set. Let's change it to cloth simulation. We got another option over here. If we enable face set auto masking, the deformation doesn't go outside of the face set borders. Cloth sim does the same thing as the geometry, but applies the cloth simulation to the mesh. And as you can see, no matter where is the mouse, it sticks to the border of the face sets and rotates based on that. If I add one more face set on the left and bring my mouse here, it will stick to this one. So you can have multiple face sets. It's so satisfying. I could do it all the time. Mesh resolution is very important. More polygons meaning more faces to bend and fold. So if I add multi-res and subdivide two times, now you see if we bend these sleeves, we got more folds around these areas. If we subdivide one more time, folds get way too small. So I don't recommend going this high. I'm not suggesting getting high either. So less subdivision meaning less folds but bigger folds. More subdivision meaning more folds but with a smaller scale. We got different deformation. If you change it to a scale slash translate, then click and drag to the top, it squeezes the mesh. If you change it to a squash and stretch, moving it to the top, it squashes the mesh and make these big folds. This doesn't look good, so we subdivide one time and do it again. You see it gets better, but not quite good, so we subdivide one more time. Hmm, there we go. Now if we subdivide after we did our cloth simulation, it is smoothed out these folds and gives us some nice looking folded sleeves. You shouldn't overdo it with the subdivision though. If we do it on high subdivision, you see we got way too many small folds that doesn't look realistic for this area. As the name says, it's not only to squash. We can also stretch our clothing. If we drag out the front part of our jacket, we get some nice stretching in these areas. For example, if you have a character that have their hands in their pocket, this brush comes in with the clutch. And and saves you a lot of time. Moving on to the boundary brush. Boundary brush is only for the edges. In default it's on geometry and you can bend the edges based on the size of your brush. But as you can see it's way too sharp. To fix that we can change it from constant to smooth or smoother and set the boundary to constant so we get these nice round shapes. Now let's switch to cloth sim. While we are on bend and constant we can bend the front part of our jacket as a normal jacket would look like. We can use it for other things too. If we change the deformation from bend to grab we can drag the jacket to the bottom resulting to these nice folds around the shoulder or you can switch to the twist this is good for when your character is in weird position when the clothing twists around their body or floating in the air but as i said it only works with the edges so if you want to change this part for example you will have to separate it from the mesh next we got cloth brush a lot of people think this is useless since everyone do it on a flat plane and think wow this blender feature is really cool then when they use it on their clothing they think Think, well this is trash so the best way in my opinion is to use a different stroke method on the top click on stroke then change the stroke method to line this way we have more control over the cloth effect just draw a line and the cloth deformation will follow it and as you can see we can get better folds this way it's really useful for the back of the jacket where most of the time we get these hanging folds in the bottom next brush is cloth filter it works best with collision that's why i brought this character if we do just as it is you can see the cloth moves through the body and nothing happens so i select my model in the physics properties i add collision now back to the jacket we can turn on use collision 
position. I add solidify to the jacket so we can see it better. On the top you can see the XYZ and orientation. If your origin orientation is incorrect like this, you can change it to world. Now I can drag the mouse to the right and the cloth falls down on the body. You need to decide how to use it based on the type and weight of your cloth. We can also use this for pants. I made the pants shorter cause it's gonna get stretched. I made a face set on the groin part cause if you don't, whole thing is gonna fall off his body. So we need a face set to play the part of the belt. Then while use collision and use face set is enabled, we can drag the pants down. Now we got these simple pants in only a few seconds. We can use other things that we've learned to improve and make it more realistic. We can also change the filter type. One of them is inflate. If I drag it to the left, jacket gets pulled back and stick to the body. Now if I drag the mouse to the right, it pulls out the jacket. It's good for when the jacket caught by wind or your character's falling and the clothing hanging in the air. Let's change it to pinch. Wherever you click on the cloth and drag to the right, the cloth gets pulled to that area. You can add a face set. Enable auto masking face set from option or go to advanced and enable face sets. Now only this part gets a stretch. Then we can smooth out the outer parts. You can use this for the parts that are pulled and stretched from the cloth buttons. In the next video, I'm gonna turn that ugly low poly model to this beautiful looking jacket. Using the tools and brushes I just mentioned in this video. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one as always you can find all the tutorials and real-time videos of making the characters on my gumroad and patreon page see you on the next one peace